I think Buddhist mindfulness describes a state of concentration, so that when you have something, an object that you want to focus on, you are practicing your mind to have a balanced and sustainable attention, so that when you reach that kind of level of concentration, you have more clarity. My name is Marcy Trent Long. This is season eight, COVID nineteen, with HKU. In celebration of Buddha's birthday, in this episode, we'll look at how to tackle relationship and family problems using the teachings of Buddhism. Because of the coronavirus pandemic, we're spending a lot of time at home. While some see this as an opportunity for quality time with their loved ones. It can also pose more chances for arguments and quarrels. So Bonnie Ao, one of our producers, and I reached out to Dr. George Lee. He's a clinical psychologist who focuses on families and couples, but he's also studying for his PhD at HKU's Buddhist Studies program. So Dr. Lee, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So shortly after I started being a humble Buddhist to learn all the. Buddhist teachings and think about how can I integrate my clinical experiences, academic experiences, and my new insights in Buddhism to basically develop a what we call theoretical orientation,、uh, using Buddhism as a guiding principle to guide all the therapeutic work. So this is my goal, and this is a little bit of who I am. Now I'm sure many of you are just like me. When we talk about Buddhism, the first thing that comes to mind is that it is a religion. So, how does religion integrate with clinical work? In my personal practicing experiences, Buddhism is more a psychology. If you look at the early Buddhist scriptures, the historical Buddha actually talked Buddhism in a way of analyzing human mind and provide a systematic and comprehensive method to liberate from suffering. I know mindfulness is one of the core concepts in Buddhism. But what are the advantages to us psychologically? So, according to the research studies that we know, of course, like mindfulness has a very positive impact to the body and mind. And from my personal experience of practicing it myself and using it as a、uh, clinical intervention, I think for me, starting off a day with mindfulness will help me consolidate my mind. I find myself calmer. Less irritable during the days that I started off with a mindfulness practice. So, Doctor Lee, are there any other values in Buddhism that are important to help us better get along with people? I would say one value of Buddhism is the interconnectedness. Many times, like in the past, when I learned、uh, family therapy or Western psychology, it may be about changing one person or changing one system. Those are very effective, but it rarely talks about how. Intrinsically, introspectively, how can I change? And when any person in a family, in a couple relationship, is in a system that we become more comfortable with ourselves, we love ourselves more. We basically, spontaneously, would be able to love other people and have more compassion for other people. So it's about working on yourself. It's actually working on all your relationships interconnected. Okay, so now let's tackle some of the common problems faced when people are kept at home during lockdown. At this time, many people are staying home. They have to face each other, so that can actually potentially create a lot more conflicts. And in that situation, what are the things that they used to disagree on? They have to face each other. That increases more chances that they will have more disagreements and fight. And besides that, another thing is about boredom. That boredom. Can sometimes lead to depressed mood. I do want to mention how in some of the families there are positive gains during this time. Having this time staying at home, some families actually get to、uh, get along, spend quality time together. So I'm actually seeing the two sides that is happening. It's good that it's not just all negative, but I do hear a lot of parents sometimes just find it really hard to communicate with their older children right now. Teenager. Is the time that many people want to have fun, even though, like in Hong Kong, 
this is about studying and getting good grades. At the same time, all teenagers need to have some fun. This is a essential developmental process. So if we take away the most important thing at this time, which is the friends and social connections, what are the possible substitutes that we can provide for them? Would be another question. If we just keep saying no and not give them anything to have, it will not work. But I think in family time, uh, we can have plans for different family projects. We can think about like let's do a chef challenge today, or like why don't we um all learn something together, or some sports, or workout challenge, or something like that. Those are good ideas, but it does seem as though kids are spending a lot of time staring at their screens, and I'm not sure that it's doing them any good. Well, from the research in clinical psychology, it has been a problem. Well, multi level of problems, like when you. Uh, are engaging in this kind of social media for a prolonged time. Of course, there will be impact on your neurological system and socially. It may uh, take away some of the opportunities for for kids to develop their social skills, to understand people's feelings, to express their feelings. Dr. Lee recommended parents try and show interest and engage in their children's online activities. He also suggested working with the kids to set up a schedule that they can follow. To avoid being too indulged in unhealthy activities. So moving on, let's also talk about couple relationships. What kind of problems do they face during social distancing? I think there are usually two problems I see in my clinical practice. First is about、um, the spousal distancing. So some of them decided to not see each other because、uh, to to protect each other, and the other extreme is. Actually, getting too close. So there's actually a problem where people spend too much time together. So it kind of speed up the whole process. Imagining how you just get to know a person and then suddenly you are almost like cohabitating. Sometimes, like the relationship may not be ready to handle this kind of closeness. And some like more practical problems I've seen or heard of are like, so we are spending more time together, but. We don't know what to do, and we find each other boring, and we don't know what to talk about. And some more intimate problems are like, okay, now we stay at home more, and we have more sexual activities, but that actually is not quality time. Like, do my girlfriend think that I come here because I want just want to have sex? But other than that, I don't know what to talk to you about. What if couples have different interpretations of social distancing when they are together? If the couples are fighting about. What are the precautions that we should take in COVID nineteen? And they are having such a discrepancy. They should have existing problems in their communication, in their relationship, right? Like before the incident happened, the incident would be just a catalyst. So instead of just talking about like what is the technique that they can solve this particular problem, I would actually suggest Carpo to try to focus back on the relationship itself. And they also understand this is the limitation of the other person. This is how the person that is actually the part that I like. This is the part that I don't like, so that they can find ways to compromise. Even in COVID nineteen, I can imagine this couple will be able to have a more reasonable discussion. And that brings us back to mindfulness. Many times when we fight, we are not talking from our mind. We are talking from our Emotions, negative emotions. We are not talking in a rational way. When we calm down, when we can contain, acknowledge our anger or other frustration, then we just talk about things that is actually much more reasonable and easier for the other people to understand. Right. So we should really take a step back and think the conversation through and try and understand our partners. We teach them ways to calm down so that they can have a more Reasonable and logical discussion. Instead of just let the emotion drive them, it will only trigger the negative emotions of each other and severe the relationship, ending up saying things that you regret later. I think we all have that experience in our life. Hopefully, these tips will be helpful to all of you at home. Remember to maintain a calm and rational mind. Try to be understanding, loving, and caring in celebration of Buddha's birthday. And that way, we can enjoy more quality time with our loved ones during this global pandemic. Stay safe, stay healthy, not just physically, but also mentally. <laughs>